So let's start at the beginning, back in the, um, the 1800s through to the 1840s. Banks at that time actually had the ability to create money. And the way they did this was through printing uh, pieces of paper. When you put your coins into the bank, they give you a receipt. And that receipt would say you've deposited five pounds. And because it was more convenient to carry bits of paper around than to carry metal coins around, people used to use the pieces of paper as though they were money. They'd actually spend the paper in the shop. And so long as the, um, the shopkeeper knew the bank and trusted the bank, um, he'd accept the paper. So basically, the pieces of paper that banks were issuing were treated as money, and they became as good as money. Now, when the banks caught onto this, they realized that, actually, if we just issue more pieces of paper with sums of money written on them, and people treat them as money, then effectively we have the power to create money. So the more that we issue, the more we can lend, and the more we lend, the more interest we get. So you can imagine with incentives like these, um, it didn't end well. Um, they created too much money, and it started to cause instability in the economy. It caused banking crises. And after um, you know, a number of years of this happening, the government of the day, so it was a conservative prime minister, Sir Robert Peel, stepped in and said, well, we can no longer allow banks to issue paper money because of the problems that it's causing in the economy. So they passed this uh, piece of legislation, the Bank Charter Act, which said from this point on, only the Bank of England will have the authority to create paper money. But they missed something out because paper money isn't the only way that you can make payments. And with the um, increasing use of checks, people had a way of making payments using the numbers that were in the uh, ledger books of the banks, the accounting entries. So they had this way of making payments without actually needing the real paper or metal money. Over time, as we discovered electricity, we got debit cards, uh, electronic fund transfers, and uh, internet banking. To the point now where more than 99% of all the money that changes hands does so electronically. The shocking thing is that even though our monetary system now is electronic, this law has never been updated since, well, since 1844, which means that it's just shy of 170 years out of date the law that actually governs our monetary system.